299,792,458. At the time of this recording, that's the speed of light in a vacuum. It's believed to be the fastest speed in the universe. To put into perspective, light can travel around the entire Earth over 7 times in just 1 second. So what would happen if you try to catch a ball propelled towards you at 90% the speed of light? But first, if you're new to the channel, welcome because you are home and to be honest, we need you. We have less than 1000 subscribers on this channel and that's a big problem. A sub to the channel would be deeply appreciated. Now that we've got an idea of what the speed of light is, how do we get a soccer ball to move that fast? Well, to answer that, we have to go a little bit back in time. Meet Albert Einstein. One of the most important things he said was, nothing with mass can travel at the speed of light. And our ball here definitely has mass. The closer an object with mass gets to the speed of light, the more energy it requires to accelerate further. It would take all the energy in the universe to get the ball to move at that speed. So that's not gonna work. A standard soccer field is measured 110 meters long and 91 meters wide. Now let's say the ball is kicked from the center of the field to the opposing team's net, which is half the length of the field itself. The ball is moving at 90% the speed of light to cover a distance of 55 meters. We don't know how long it would take the ball to reach the goalkeeper. To do that, we use this formula. Come on now, dog. Come on, man. Hey. It's actually quite simple. Now, the first question we need to ask ourselves is, what is it that we know? Well, we know the distance to be 55 meters, of course, and the speed, which is 90% the speed of light. The second question is, what do we need to find? And clearly, it's the time. The third question is, how can we go about it? Well, we use this formula from earlier. The formula says speed equals to distance divided by time. In this case, we know the speed and distance, so let's rearrange the formula to solve for the time. And by doing that, we have a formula for the time. And if our calculations are correct, we should have our time to be... Let's convert it into something more readable. If 1 nanosecond is equal to 1 billionth of a second, how many nanoseconds will give us 2.04 times 10 to the power minus 8 seconds? And if we solve that correctly, we should have our time to be 204 nanoseconds. See, I told you, it's actually quite simple. So if a soccer ball were kicked at 90% the speed of light towards a goalkeeper from a distance of 55 meters, it would take approximately 204 nanoseconds to arrive that is like <laughs> almost instant the ball we carry a massive amount of kinetic energy potentially causing catastrophic damage the following are predictions of what would happen in the 204 nanosecond time frame let's say it's a normal kick except for the moment the player kicks the ball we throw the laws of physics out the window and magically accelerates the ball to 0.9c. The ball is moving so fast that it appears as if everything else, including the air molecules, is frozen in place. These molecules are vibrating back and forth at a few hundred miles per hour. But compared to the ball's astonishing speed of over 600 million miles per hour, they seem to be standing still. Since we threw the laws of physics out the window, the usual rule of air dynamics don't apply here. Normally, air would flow around any moving object, but the molecules in front of the ball don't have time to be pushed aside. The ball hits them with such a force that the atomic nuclei in the air molecules actually merge with the atomic nuclei in the ball. The collision with the air molecule would knock away the nitrogen, carbon and hydrogen from the ball, fragmenting it off into tiny particles and also triggering waves of thermonuclear fusion in the air. This would result in a flood of x-rays that would spread out in a bubble along with exotic particles, plasma inside, centered around the center circle. And that would move away from the center circle slightly faster than the ball itself. At this point, the 18-yard box is far enough that light hasn't had time to reach it, which means the goalkeeper still sees the player about to kick but has no idea that anything is wrong. After 200 nanoseconds, the ball reached the penalty area, or at least the cloud of expanding plasma that used to be the ball, and it will engulf the goalkeeper and the bars and the net and start disintegrating them all. But it doesn't end there. A shell of x-rays and superheated plasma surge out, obliterating the barricade, the backstand, and nearby communities consuming everything in its path. 